Now, I obviously nearly fell out of my chair, was admitting myself into hospital after this hand because clearly something is very, very, very wrong with me. Hey guys, Ben Ababi here and welcome back to another episode. So today we are not gonna faff around with any chat. We're gonna jump straight on into the graph for the month so far, and then we're gonna do a bunch of hands for you today. So once again, the poker gods are definitely proving that they are extremely real. After posting the 35 by month last month, we have been mega doom switched, I think it's fair to say, and we've lost about 26 buy-ins in very few hands on GG. We actually made a few buy-ins on WPN, and we even made a buy-in or so at 500 zoom on Poker Stars. Shout out to all those regs still grinding the 500 Zoom games after all these years. But overall, you can see I played about 12,500 hands and I lost in green line around $10,500 and I am a couple of thousand dollars above EV. So I just want to quickly touch on mental game and morale. I think overall I'm feeling relatively positive, but there's definitely that sense of like making a couple of steps forward and then a couple of steps back constantly. And that's what this year has really, really felt like. It's been kind of like a bit of an upswing and then kind of getting decimated and losing it back. But as always, because I play such low volume, this is just going to happen for very long periods at a time. I mean, it could literally be a year and a half or something like that, depending on how many hands I play. So I just wanna give a quick reminder to those of you who do not feel like they're kind of making progress. Progress is not linear in poker, unfortunately. Our ability to learn and get better at poker is the only thing that we can kind of like work with and have a bit of control over. But fundamentally, like our results are just so, so, so much more out of our control than I think anyone really wants to take credit for. So just a reminder to you and a reminder to myself, let's keep plugging away and just doing our best and playing our best and hopefully things will turn around at some point. So let's introduce the hands that we're gonna be looking at today. The first two hands are two outrageous ace high hero calls that I make versus two different regs. The next, there is a ridiculously wild west slash field player hand where a recreational call calls the three bet. And obviously me being the whale I am, I've got to come along and see the flop. And in our last hand today, I receive what is probably the actual biggest ownage that I've ever received at a poker table. I'm not looking forward to showing that one. I'm not going to lie. So onto our first hand today, we have got Ace-King offsuit in the big blind at a 2-5 ante table and we get an open from a pretty tight slash weak reg from the cutoff and we get three bet from a very good reg on the button to 39. This is a very good reg at the 500 ante tables. Haven't played with them much on the 1k tables, but they're definitely like up there as one of the best players at the ante tables for sure. Uh, we call for the Ace-King offsuit and we make it 150. I know this looks massive, but given the ante and how small the three bet was from in position, I can't really just be making this like 120. I think it's just too small. So I make it 150. In position calls and we see queen x6 with a flush draw. Queen high boards are just generally gonna favor the four better a lot. So that means we do get to bet a lot of our range a lot of the time. I decide to use half pot out position on this board simply because I just do have that wealth of queen x and I actually decide to bet my hand all of the time. In theory, I imagine there may be like a small amount of checks on this board, but I think the betting very, very frequently is just going to be pretty good overall. When button calls, I think that they have plenty of queen x, flush draws, 5-4 suited, 10-9, jack-10. I don't think that they get to defend ace-jack or ace-ten of spades on the flop. I haven't looked at the sim, and because we are at this some um, wild west table, we can't really look at a very accurate sim, I wouldn't say. I just don't think intuitively in position gets to call versus half pot with a hand like ace 10 or ace jack of spades. So I think that those are kind of discounted. The reason I'm even mentioning that is because when I'm thinking about barreling the turn here, I really don't want to block the backdoor floats that are now going to fold. So the way I approach this spot is I'm going to bluff combos with ace king with a club all the time on the turn. My sizing is going to be half pot. And then with my other ace king, even though we don't block the ace queen suited here, we do block pocket aces, kings, and a king queen suited. So I just don't think this is ever gonna be a spot where you're just always gonna check an ace king combo. So I just decide to randomize this combo for half the time. And on this occasion, we do hit the bet button. Filling calls and we see a six of diamonds on the river. So I think shoving here would be a pretty big mistake. We definitely have pot share here. Uh, for those of you who don't understand what pot share is, it basically just means that we have no reason to shove our combo here as a bluff because there's gonna be plenty of combos that in position is now just gonna check back. Not flush draws being kind of the main portion of that range. So when we do check, we just win fairly often. That doesn't mean that our combo isn't going to make money as a shove, but I think it's just gonna make more money as a check and then decide. 
So we do check the river and villain tanks for a long old while and ends up shoving for around one third pot, which is $390. So when Villain does shove here, what's the bottom of the value threshold? I think it's going to be a queen, any queen, I think. Queen 10, given it's one third pot and like I'm in a fast play node. And when I check, I'm just naturally going to be over check folding. So I think imposition just does have a wealth of value combos. Ordinarily, in a lot of situations where like the value range is so narrow, you don't get to bluff as many of those missed flush draws. But this is definitely not one of those situations, simply because imposition has just got so, so, so many value combos in their range that they can shove. With that in mind and the six coming, we are going to run into a combo like 6-5 or 7-6 or Queen X like a decent amount of the time, I would say. But then there's going to be plenty of other times. We're going to run into 10-9, we're going to run into some clubs, some 5-4, etc. So in this occasion, I do decide to call. Fortunately, we do run into the very well played 5-4 of spades. And the second hand today, we are again at an anti table and we've got ace three of clubs in the cutoff. We open it up to just under 3x and we get 3-bet from the small blind who is a relatively truth be told tight-ish reg. Never going to be folding ace-3 suited in this configuration cutoff versus small blind in an anti table. I think 4-betting as well is a good option but I'm also going to be calling a bunch. I'm always going to be pure continuing is what I'm saying. We see a very, very good 10-4 deuce with a flush draw, giving us a gut shot and flush draw. And we see a big bet of two thirds pot. Sizing looks okay. I think maybe a little bit on the big size. I think this could be just a range bet spot for half pot. Either way, I'm never gonna be raising my combo versus this sizing. I'm just gonna be pure calling. We see a nine of spades bringing a second flush draw on the turn and Villain now gets out the large bet of full pot, which is 422. Now we obviously have a continue, there's no question about that, it's just whether or not we call or shove. So in game I didn't really consider shoving as a very good option, but in hindsight I think it's actually a really really good option. We do get out of position just to fold a bunch of equity. Hands like King Queen and King Jack, even some spade combos as well, a hand like 8-7 of spades is definitely going to have to fold the turn. So even though we beat a lot of those hands now, we also just deny equity from that portion of the range. And also from a hand like King Queen of Hearts, for example, they'll just fold and never bluff the river and we just clean up a bunch of equity. We see a very bricky deuce of diamonds on the river and Villain now tanks and ends up shoving for around 40 to 45% pop. We now have a very, very interesting situation on our hands as to whether or not we want to call or fold our hand. So before I talk about what happened or the results or anything like that, I just wonder what people would do here. Can you let me know in the comments, what would you do on the river? Would you just fold? Would you have shoved the turn? Would you now call the river given that you've got a pretty good price and the bluffs from out of position are fairly intuitive? So onto my own thoughts in game. The main thing that I was holding in mind was that this player is definitely on the tight side and I really, really, really do not want to be making hero calls versus players who are on the tighter side. I think that's just a good general rule of thumb for all of us. However, this is just a situation where I naturally arrive with so many natural folds on the river. A bunch of one pair hands that I want to fold, a bunch of queen jack, king queens, clubs, spades. There are so many of the combos that want to fold. The other thing is that out of position just never gets to bluff a pair or in my mind, a better ace high. I think these kind of hero calls are really riskier versus some opponents that end up bluffing ace high, a hand like ace queen of hearts, for example. Because if we bluff catch versus a hand that bluffs that is better, then it makes our call immeasurably terrible and awful. So because our position is a tighter player, I just don't think that they do bluff ace high here. I don't think they're gonna find a hand like ace queen or ace jack. I think they're gonna find a check somewhere, particularly when they use the size and scheme that they did, which is two thirds and then pot. I think for a tighter player, those sizes are a bit unintuitive from a hand like ace jack of hearts, for example, or a hand like ace five. Admittedly, we do chop with ace five. Next is our pot odds. We do have very, very good pot odds. It is around, as I said, about 40 to 45% pots. We don't need to be right all that much either. And then the last thing to mention is that out of position definitely is not going to bluff combo with the ace of clubs in it, in my opinion, given that they may well perceive that that is going to be my folding range. Either way, in game, I decided that I am going to be calling my hand some of the time. I definitely, definitely do not want to pure call my combo against a tighter player here. So I will never pure call. I decided to call my combo 25% of the time. Let me know what you think about my thoughts and here is the result of the hand.
we do run into Pocket Queens, which is a very well played hand, well, pretty standard hand from them. But yeah, very, very questionable on my end. And let's just say the next hand is even more questionable than this one. So here we are taking it to the field player on conventional streets. We get an open from a reg under the gun and we get a three bet from the cutoff. Cutoff is a YouTube reg that I'm sure some of you will know. We get a cold call from the small blind who could only be described as an absolute whopper. Um, I'm not really in the game of cold calling three bets. In fact, I never cold call three bets. However, this is just one of those very, very, very awkward situations where OP was just cold calling absolute filth hands, like eight, seven offsuit and like jack 10 offsuit and 10, nine offsuit and ace five offsuit and that kind of thing. So I think that calling is kind of cuspy. My main worry with this now is that under the gun is still in the hand. And actually this is just gonna have to be a fold, but we have arrived and this is the hand of street. So I guess people are gonna just have to deal with it. We cold call and we get another fold from under the gun. We see a fairly boring ace king eight rainbow giving us a gut shot and back to a flush draw. I think versus big bets here from in position, I'm definitely just gonna be folding. However, they don't go big, they go about 20 something percent pot, 22 percent pot, very, very small bet. I think we just have a pure continue here. Definitely don't want to be raising into the mouth of nuts, so I'm just going to be calling my combo. We see a very disguised seven of hearts giving us a gut shot, well, a double gut shot, as well as a flush draw, as well as a straight flush draw and in position chooses to bet 75% pot on the turn. Right now on the turn, I'm just gonna pure shove pocket eights. I probably would have only called eight on the flop, given that I'm never, ever, ever gonna have a raising range on ace, king, eight in this configuration, I don't think, since I just have no aces, no kings, and no ace, king. So I now would be check shoving pocket eights on the turn. Ace, queen, honestly, is very, very, very close. I think I would probably call I would absolutely never shove it. I would probably call it though on the turn, ace, queen of diamonds, simply because we do value catch versus ace, queen as well. And then there is a chance of a hand like jack, 10 of hearts, for example. When we actually hold a jack of hearts and a 10 of hearts, it's very, very difficult for in position to have any bluffs here. When they do bet the turn, what are they expecting me to fold? They want me to fold ace, queen and ace, jack on the turn, given that my cold calling range is actually just gonna be quite defined when the recreational cold calls as well we see the most disgraceful river in the nine of clubs giving us the nut straight. Definitely not playing any donks here uh, because there's just absolutely no reason to do that. In position is still gonna follow through with their value. And also we want them to bluff on occasion, I think if they can possibly have it. Although I just don't see any bluffs from in position in this spot, to be honest with you. When we check, the villain doesn't waste too much time before shoving. We snap call with the nuts and in a not so surprising turn of events, Villain does have pocket kings in position. Now I just wanna say something quickly, and this sounds absolutely ridiculous. I actually think kings is probably a check back on the river. And this sounds absolutely ridiculous. I actually think kings is probably a check back on the river. Because I can't possibly call worse because I've shoved pocket eights on the turn. I always fold ace queen on the river and I never have pocket aces. So yeah, weirdly, in position is probably shoved only into jack and hearts. However, I should never have jack and hearts. So this is probably one of the sickest hands that they've ever played, I would imagine. And it's yeah, very, very, very unlucky to them and extremely lucky to me. So we open pocket aces under the gun. And let me tell you now, I'm already getting flashbacks from this hand. Um, I am, yeah, I'm already regretting posting it to be honest with you, but we move. We have pocket aces and we get a three bet and we make a mandatory four bet to $190, all standard stuff so far for sure. Villain defense and we see a very pleasing ace nine seven rainbow. Now in theory, I assume that there would be few checks on this board and it would be something in the region of like 80, 20, something like that. Exploitatively, I didn't really feel strongly either way. However, I just decided to go with theory or what I thought was theory in mind at the time, which was checking some of the time. If I am gonna have a checking range, Pocket Ace is actually gonna be finding its way into that checking range for sure. I have since looked at the sim though, and there actually are no checks on this texture. So I'm waffling, but how could I have known in game? Villain checks back and we see a two of clubs on the turn. So obviously now we're in a node that doesn't exist, or should I say shouldn't exist in theory. However, now we do arrive after in position snap checking flop. I think we probably just wanna have one sizing on the turn and it's probably just gonna be small sizings. 
That allows us to bet hands like pocket kings, pocket queens, etc. And then also develop bluffs with hands like king, queen, king, jack, and stuff like that. So I think small sizing is probably a pretty good approach on the turn. We see a jack of diamonds on the river, and now we have probably the most interesting decision point of the hand. So it's whether or not we want to have small or big sizes on the river or both. So I think on the turn, once the flop has gone check, check, I am going to be betting ace-king always on the turn. I think that that is going to be the first value combo that I'm going to bet the turn with. Ace-queen is probably going to be the line where I start mixing, and then there's going to be some ace-10 and ace-5 that I probably check a decent amount on the turn, and I arrive to the river. So on this particular river, I'm definitely going to want to be using a block size. Whether or not we want to have a big sizing or not is up for debate. I actually decided that I'm only ever going to use a small size in this situation just because I really, really lack a very, very top end value apart from exactly pocket aces. Now, you might argue that I have pocket jacks as well, which is true, but also when villain does check back twice, they're not really incentivized to calling all ins on this river. But when I do block the river, they are actually incentivized into calling or bluffing some jack x on the river. The other thing to say is that because I have two aces in my hand and I double block the calling range, I think exploitatively, I really want to go small on the river because I'm really expecting to get hero calls and maybe some bluffs from Jack X, as I said. The last thing to say is that I think Imposition just gets the bluff, flop and turn at least quite a lot of the time. So I don't really see the EV of checking pocket aces on the river to be as high as blocking. But... I have no real evidence for that being true, so I guess that's up for debate. People can let me know what they think about that. Villa now goes deep into the tank, and I guess you are probably now realizing which direction this is about to go in. They roll over the pocket jacks for second set. Now, I obviously nearly fell out of my chair, was admitting myself into hospital after this hand because clearly something is very, very, very wrong with me. But sadly, I've looked at this now in the sim, and I know I did say that flop should be betting always, but when we arrive in this node, villain is actually pretty much exclusively only meant to call the river. I mean, what is there to say about this? Uh, I think this just tops off a very, very speculative session of hands. I think today we're probably gonna get pretty roasted, but you know what, I'm here for it.